Welcome back to another episode of When Destiny Calls. I'm Dr. Lahab El Samurai, and with me always, my co-host and friend, Christy Foster is here. Christy, how are you doing today? Good morning. Guess good afternoon in some places. I'm doing well today. Doing really well. It's been a nice week. I'm here in Salt Lake City. We've had a very cold and snowy week. Today we have sunshine, which is nice. Ooh. Makes a huge difference to have sun start coming oh, in yes. the windows. My we brain does sun. much better. We are like plants. We without, are like plants. Without water and sun, we die. We wither away very quickly. Yeah. So it's nice to see the sunshine today. So today, Christy, what are we going to talk about? Well, today we're going to discuss the magician archetype. Oh. And how to identify the magician archetype if that is your archetype. Ooh. What would I, how would I even know that? So some key questions and also about how the magician, if you are a magician, how, how does a magician move through the world? How could they be better grounded if they need grounding? Ooh. And what might be some of the challenges and gifts that a magician would have? Yes. So it's, it's something that, we can better understand because there's a lot of uh i think a lot of talk about magic and magicians and what is that and why why are we hearing that i see it quite a bit in social media um are you attracted to it so these are some of the key questions that i would like to discuss about the magician so maybe what we could talk about is what magic is to the magician great place to start Okay, because I think the definition of magic to um, everybody is that it's some kind of trick, mm -hmm. some kind of um, manipulation. Yeah. When we think of the magician, we think of that their manipulation, the trick is that they see and move with the energy and use the energy. And that is what is magic for them, is how to use the energy. It's not a creation outside. This is use of energy. It's how the movement of the energy is directed. Right. Um, I would say in my practice, I am a, I am a magician archetype. So this is something that is, is very natural for me. And I Ooh. will, I'll reference back magic. And I, that's such a good definition because when I, when I see magic in my clients or in a session, what I'm seeing is transformation within their within their somatic body and their emotional body, it begins to transform from being stuck into being free. To me, that would be my definition of magic is transformation. Yeah. Not yeah. conjuring of something. Well, it is conjuring because what you're conjuring is the movement of the energy. What you're conjuring, what you're conjuring is something that is already exists. You're not, into something else something that doesn't exist yes okay so that's a very good point i'm not yeah. conjuring something outside of me no i'm i'm conjuring i'm creating a, a different kind of alchemical process within the container that's already there correct and when you're working with somebody and when you're working with their energy and when you're um doing the treatment therapy that you do you move through the idea of where is the energy yes has the energy hit a block has the energy moved and if it has moved where has it moved yes talk a little bit about that well when i work with someone i'm looking literally at the physical body to see where the patterns are being held patterns of um let's say patterns of stubbornness let's keep it really simple 
Okay. And someone who has a pattern of stubbornness, that can be a challenge for them, but also a gift in some ways, but I'm looking, okay, where does that show up? So a lot of times it'll show up in the jaw from clenching. Ooh. And <clears throat> some people might not be aware that they have a stubborn pattern, Ooh. but bringing awareness to the clenching in the jaw, which will also show up as clenching in the lower back in pain Ooh. and bringing that into their awareness, that pattern of stubbornness. Then we have some uh, components to begin to work with Ooh. in this, in this era of alchemy, which is the magic piece. Once again, we have Ooh. different components that I start bringing them into their own energy center. So they're the ones that actually do quite a bit of the work is they're aware of what, what is in them, what is stopping them from having a better relationship or being understood. Ooh. And I think until people are even aware of what is in their own container, in their own body, in they can't real the stuckness stays there because they're blind to it. Yes. They don't see it. And so, that's where a magician comes yeah. in, I think, is because a magician can see what other people can't see. Yeah. That's how I see that. Because the magician sees where the energy is stuck. Yeah. The magician sees the energy. So if you're a magician archetype, what you're watching, so I'm, I do coaching, consulting. What I'm watching is where is the energy? Where is it tied into? What is it hooked on? Mm -hmm. Because usually the pattern is, is that People will talk about the thing that's bugging them most, which means the hook that has them and that keeps pulling them in. So they'll keep talking about it. Even when they talk about something else, they're still talking about it. Mm -hmm. So you, you see this repetitive pattern and through the repetitive pattern, then you see where they're stuck. Where are the glitches? Yes. We talk about the glitch in our book a lot. Where are the glitches? So how do we resolve the glitch? So the glitch is what I see. So what they see is how they do things. This is how I do things. What I see is that they're trapped by the glitch yes and thinking that this is their process and it's not their process I, I, you, you gave a really uh, great example earlier when we were talking um we hadn't started recording yet so <laughs> but you gave a great example of how um in jam, after you have moved through um, four sessions, your what you see is much broader than what you used to see. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah. So I'll speak of my experience in jam. Yeah. <clears throat> what I had my my life up to that point, I have done a lot of work, personal work, um, different types of therapy. And when I started JAMP, I was completely taken back that there was so much of me that I hadn't seen. So many yeah. of these patterns that I thought I was aware of, but I wasn't aware of them because I wasn't connected to them. Yeah. And then you came in when I met you and we did some sessions and I was completely blown away at what I didn't see, what I wasn't aware of and yeah. how much it had shut off parts of me. Like after some sessions with you, I, I noticed I was laughing way more than I ever probably have in my life, which Ooh. I found lovely. I yeah. think my family thought I was crazy because I was laughing at 
funny things that would, I would just start crying and I couldn't stop laughing, Ooh. which was that that was new for me. Yeah. And I think the most fabulous thing was in my work, it, it was exponential. Like it expanded so quickly. My gift of the magician archetype, yeah. which is being able to see that 360 degrees within someone's field yeah which is someone's energy field let me use yeah. language that people yeah. can understand because my own energy field was more clear yeah and when my vessel my psyche is more clear my capacity to hold other people is much greater and that's what i noticed the most yes i was much lighter and it just i felt free in so many ways that i i probably couldn't even put into language and it's the movement that we, <clears throat> we gain the ability to move outside of the range that we were held in. Yeah. So we were almost like being corralled in a space. So, so depending on your archetype, the corral looks differently. Like for the magician, the corral is not being able to see. Mm -hmm. is only being able to see what is close to you and not being able to see is is the illness not being able to see past that boundary is an issue is a pathology for the magician archetype it usually indicates some form of trauma some form of unresolved issue because they can't see so give us an example of a block for a magician a block for a magician would be that um, they can't see the solution to the problem. Because our magician's always looking for solutions. Yes, but they can't see it now. They can't, they can't find it because they can't see it. So if I have a problem, I'm stuck in the problem. Now that for the magician, you don't, you're not stuck in the problem. The problem creates an opportunity for you. The problem creates the um, creates an opportunity for you to use your power to resolve the issue. So any problem that is outside of your ability to fix or see past it is a glitch. And that glitch becomes um, constraining. Mm -hmm. I would say first energetically, yes. it becomes restraining. And then over time, what I see with other archetypes that are similar to mine with magicians are definitely feeling like they're in a maze that they can't get out of. And Lost, it is a trap. Yeah. And it's a constant overthinking of the mind, knowing yeah. there's a solution, but not being yeah. able to, to get the solution. And I would say, because there's still too much of their own pieces that aren't cleared. Yeah. So you end up second guessing yourself a lot. And for the magician, that's hell. That's basically a definition of being in hell. It's not trusting your ability to see something or making a decision and it's completely wrong. Yeah. So that's when the magician starts to see that this is, I'm in hell and I can't get out of it. So they become depressed, they become, um, they become withdrawn, they become very self-critical. Like I notice myself, I, I'll start saying, yeah, but, yeah, but mm. you end up you end up trapped even in your words that come out. You can't seem to move forward. So I think for the magician, I think that's what happens where they're unable to make a decision at work. Or they don't trust their intuition when their intuition is saying one thing and they um and they can't trust it. 
when they second guess themselves or when they decide that they're going to plow ahead no matter what and that results in burnout absolutely quickly absolutely and almost kind of like a kind of we and we are always speaking the language of archetypes always well the archetypes are speaking through us which is why we recognize it yeah they're speaking through us and so if, when someone's labeled they're a mad magician he yeah. he just went mad yeah. that would be that glitch that took over correct and literally makes the the psyche feel crazy but i would say and also the body that's really yeah. when people are not integrating or slowing down either it's almost like yeah. it's almost impossible to stop because there's this force that is it like exploding yeah well so what happens is the energetic pattern around you um you basically crawl into the middle of it and so you're stuck in the middle so the energy is around you but you're stuck in the middle and you can't see it anymore it's right. almost like a shield around you now and you're stuck in this invisible shield and now everything you do you're basically you're just bouncing off the walls of the shield you can't seem to penetrate it because you don't see it and then you become more and more um obsessed with it obsessed with the shield or obsessed with how to get rid of the shield how to get rid of the shield but it keeps you stuck within the glitch right yeah so it keeps you stuck in the shield <clears throat> because the glitch led you there and the glitch is there and to get out of the glitch you have to recognize you this is a glitch but you don't recognize it this is the big problem i have yeah. a i have a client who um is talking about how she's disassociating okay so we've done so many sessions she shouldn't be disassociating that way but she's a magician archetype and so she is caught in the glitch and she's embraced the glitch she doesn't know she's embraced it but she's embraced it so when she's triggering herself and disconnecting herself over and over so it feels like the disassociation of the trauma but in this case the magician is basically lost something and now found it by recreating it mm. which creates a lot of confusion yes <clears throat> and, and then what, what they say is i don't know why this is happening yeah uh as soon as we say i don't know why this is happening then for the magician that means it's self created i don't know why this is happening it's self created and i would add to that cuz i heard mm. this this week mm. is uh, that's not mine yes because they see it in the energetic field and i it was fascinating because we started a session and i noticed a pattern of pain in the stomach and we were discussing it and and she said but is it it isn't mine that isn't mine and through the session at the end i said well that is yours because it's in your stomach yeah and that's where i would say the quote magic happened is yeah. she goes Oh my god, you're right. It is in my yeah. stomach. And then that's where the awareness came in that it yeah. wasn't separate from her. Yeah. So that's brilliant, right? The shield, you're in the middle of the shield, but you don't see the shield. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's in your stomach. It's inside of you, but you don't see it inside of you. You see it outside of you. Yes. Um, yeah. that's the glitch. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Magicians complicate things that are not complicated. Like people will say to them, "You, you are talking to a magician. It's like, why are you making it so complicated? If you are saying that to somebody, they're a magician archetype." Mm. 
if they're saying why is it so complicated if you, if you are saying to if you are saying to somebody why are you making it so complicated the person who's making it complicated they're the magician he's a magician they might not be aware that they're making it complicated they think right, it's pretty that's simple just how they are yeah they think it's pretty simple because it comes simply to them yes as we learned this early on in school like your classmates have certain skills you don't have. And there are things that you do that they can't do. Well, that's the archetype, right? So give us a few more examples of indicators, like that's a good indication. Give us a few more examples of indicators of identification with the, the magician archetype if someone is that. Well, magician archetype, uh, the magician never has one solution to a problem. Hmm. golden rule they can sit in one conversation me and you have sat i'm a magician archetype you're a magician archetype and we sat and we talked about a solution to a problem we must have pitched like 10 different conversations right yes but we understood each other right yeah we were still talking the same language had anybody else sat with us had a warrior sat with us it's like i don't know what you guys are talking about very right? true. Mm -hmm. If the warrior archetype was sitting there, the um, the queen archetype would say, "Oh, you're complicating it. You're you're making this way too complicated. It's very simple, and this is how you do it." It's not the magician archetype's way. No, it isn't. They're going to talk back and forth. They're going to talk about one idea and then another idea and then another idea. But how did we get to this idea? They're going to talk about that. Which makes complete sense to me. And it makes complete sense to me. But if there's anybody else who's sitting there just <laughs> listening to us talking to each other, they would look at us and say, what the hell are they talking about? Yes. Right? Yeah. What is the strategy here? I hear this a lot from my brother. What is the strategy here? What are you trying to say? <laughs> I hear that from my husband, who's a warrior. <laughs> so my Let's brother the is, bolts. is the king archetype. He's like, I don't understand. Be clear. <laughs> it's like I was. Right. I was we'll talking see, no, for my like response, 30 how much minutes. More I was explaining it for 30 minutes. How, how clear do you want me to be? So we're accused of not being clear. Mm, yes. We're accused of uh, manipulation. And Would that's that because, be manipulation by other archetypes like the warrior and the queen? Well, yes, for them, um, they don't trust us because they don't understand process. They don't understand our process in particular. And so is that, does it feel threatening to them? Is that why they would get frustrated or question us yes yes because there is a path because we talked about the divine last week we talked about the queen archetype mm -hmm. there's a right way of doing things for the queen yes for the queen and king archetype there's a right way of doing things yeah this is how you do things and if you just do them the right way you don't make a mistake and see, and that doesn't even compute in my brain. Exactly, because the, the magician archetype, there is no one right way. Right, there's many ways. Yes. Yes. Yeah, because you're basically going to one point. So the magician will say, okay, if I approach it from the east, if I approach it from the west, and somebody will ultimately say, you're making it too complicated. Mm. I certainly understand that better today. Because for me, it wasn't complicated. And I can understand no. how someone who doesn't think like that would be very confused. Yeah, I think they did. I think they sit there and stare at you. Yeah. And say they're hiding something. So that's the other thing. They're hiding something. So there's manipulation, there's hiding. Hiding what? What, what are you hiding? So if you say to somebody, what, what do you think I'm hiding? Right? No, you're not telling me the whole story. Okay, so there's a whole story that we're hiding. Right? But that is just the way the magician sees the world. They see the world 
and snapshots. So they talk about the snapshot they saw. Mm. Now that snapshot changes mm -hmm. because they have another perspective on it. So they might tell it in a different way. So then it sounds like to the other person, it sounds like you haven't told them the story, but you're telling them the story, but you're just telling them from different perspectives. They don't understand. There's only one perspective to the story. There's only one way to tell the story. That's why magicians are storytellers, right? Well, yeah, because there's so many different paths leading to the same exactly. destination. Yeah, and it could be the same story. And 10 different people will tell the story differently because there are 10 different magicians. Yes. And I would, I would suspect too, and I've learned this from you, that magicians don't trust other magicians easily. No. Do they recognize other magicians easily? Yes. So part of the recognition is the language of, of it. You're making this too complicated. How then it's it, the 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 magicians recognize each other and then it depends on um their openness about their abilities and i would also add to that as in my own experience is as i've con con as i continue to clear i don't feel threatened yes I used to, and I think yes. I still have those moments for sure. Yes. But as the more I clear the, I don't feel threatened. I feel, uh, yes. I feel Liberated. intrigued. Yeah. Because it's liberated it, and interested. Yeah. Cause that's it's interesting. I yeah. yeah. So that's also a positive. Um, there's a lot of talk about light and shadow, Dr. Lahab. Mm. So could you give us some, examples of when a magician's in shadow but how would that show up well they don't have a regard for when it's when they're in shadow they don't have regard for the other the other meaning what well the other human being okay the other human being yeah for them they're superior to the other that's always that's shadow Shadow is that, well, I, I see, understand, and connect to things that you can imagine. Shadow. So if someone starts to hear that pattern in their brain, yeah. that is a magician. Yeah. Well, the magicians know when they've crossed the line. Because they rationalize more and more of their behaviors. They know. Because Magicians always have to hold themselves to accountability. They always have to say, you know, there's a line. So it's always very tricky, right? Mm -hmm. I can take advantage of this, but should I take advantage of this? Well, that's the line. Yeah. That is the edge. Yeah. The edge. Yeah. Because... And, people, and people are scared of the magicians because they like to hang around the edge. Like, I might choose this, but really, I'm not going to choose that. I'm going to choose this. But I don't know yet. But that's so people's like, well, no, I, I don't like it. Hmm. You're not being straight. You're not, you're not making a decision. You are being indecisive. You are not. And that's usually um, talk towards them feeling... Um, they're projecting onto the archetype. Mm. The archetype exists within the state. The, the state is always in flux because energy is never in the same place at the same time. It doesn't, doesn't, it's not static, it moves. So the magician has to move with it. And if they're not moving with it, then um, a pathology has gotten them, cancer has gotten them, death has gotten them. Mm -hmm. They start to die, they start to decay. They question everything they did. They don't believe that anything they did meant anything, that they contributed nothing, that it meant nothing, that this is the existential end. So part of... They become very nihilistic. 
and and they they implode basically well yeah or they wither and die yeah yeah i mean their their own madness eats them up that's why um that's why the people who are talking to the man and objects in the mental institution are magicians archetypes i can see they're that. the ones who are talking yeah they're they're the ones who are having psychotic breaks they're the ones who are talking to things that you can't see or talk to but they can yeah but they're no longer connected they're no longer have a tether to this world and we talked last time too about the sovereign the king queen archetype yeah and you had you had said that every queen or king needs a magician yes but only one they can't have more than one. Well, so why is that? Because they create chaos. They'll contradict each other. Magicians create chaos. Yeah, yeah. They'll contradict each other. One will tell them one way and the other will tell them a different way. And when the two magicians meet, they'll say, yeah, I told them the same thing. Which was in just a different way. Which was, which was true for right. the magicians. It wasn't true for the person who was receiving the information. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, that's why you have chaos. That's why, you know, um, they say MIT is kind of the magician's Hogwarts. Oh, yes. Yeah. I would think so. The creations that come out of that. Yeah. Because they see it and they're creating <clears throat> yeah. what is in that, the quantum field that's all yeah, right they, there. Yeah, they, they see that field. Yeah. You know, they saw the field before they studied the field. They saw the field. Yes. Yeah. So now that they're you're talking about the field, they're putting numbers to the field, uh, guessing how the field is going to work, that's the magician archetype. But the magician archetypes are everywhere. You know, they're counselors. They're, they're just, or as my, my little sister says, there's very few of us. She says, have you noticed there's not that many of us? I said, well, that's true. You know, and part of it is historically, they have not been treated well. They're the first ones to die. They're the ones who are thrown into the gulag. They're the ones who were thrown into the dungeons. They're the ones who were exterminated as groups called witches. And it was all because my sense of how reality moves is different from how other people's sense of reality moves. So it would be- And that is inherently dangerous. archetypal, yes. Yeah, I can so understand that. Yes, that's where the projection and the paranoia comes in towards them. I was thinking the other day, I was sharing this with you before our call too. Um, mm. A, a misunderstanding that I had with a warrior archetype. Yeah. And, and what I understood was, was just what you said. I can, I understood that they felt threatened because warriors are very black and white. Yes. And black and, and white I, meaning right or wrong. Yeah. Right yeah. or wrong. Yeah. And um, it helped me it helped me have less judgment for myself and for them because I thought, well, okay, I, I can understand that because even um, for me growing up, I can see how it was, could have been threatening in a certain way because how I function and how I think is not, I don't conform. I don't yeah. even know how to conform. Well, we don't know. We don't, we don't understand the term conform. And that's why, that's why we, uh, the magician archetype has been um, the political dissenters, the ones who dissent against government. Usually they're the philosophers, mm -hmm. the psychoanalysts. Um, these are the people who get thrown in the gulag. Priests, yeah. um, nuns. These are, these are the people who, there's a reason that the magician can take those forms those forms are very solitary. There's a reason they could take that form. So, so not all priests are magicians, by the way. 
there's a lot of warriors, um, a lot of lost kings. There's, there's a lot of disruption within these organizations. The magicians are, are few. They're not the ones who are associated with the scandals. They actually, they don't. Not all of them, like I said, mm. there is evil. Yes, I think there is too. But for those who stand up for people's rights, for the workers' rights, for, for the ones who say, this is not how it should be, it can be better. I see a different. That's a magician. Ooh. And other people can't see it, which is why they're threatened by it. Gandhi, Gandhi is the quintessential magician archetype. It's a good example. Yeah. Because they're not violent. No. I, they're not. No, they, they don't need to be. They know where power is. That's a good this point. A, it was a tiny, uh, tiny man with a rag around his waist brought the British Empire to his knees. Yeah. Magician architect. Mandela. The more, the more clear he was, and Mandela, the more Mandela power was they the accessed. Magician architect. Yeah. 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 And then everyone around them recognized the archetype. Well, yeah, they recognized the archetype because the archetype <clears throat> is embodied through them. Yeah. Like, Gandhi embodied the archetype. Because the archetype's neutral and it's bigger than we as a human. Exactly. It's a God. It's a, it, it has existed before we learned how to walk on legs when we were still in the water as bacteria. Its formation had already been there. Yeah. That energy was always there. And, and the energy, and I've heard you say this before, the energy of the archetype is always moving us towards wholeness. Yes. And, and we can go kicking and screaming Ooh. or we can surrender to it. Yeah. So if, young. if you're a magician archetype, what yeah. would, I, I'm fascinated in, in the different aspects of surrender. Yeah. And so if, if you resonate with being a magician and quote, surrendering or flowing with the archetype. Yeah. Um, how would that look? Or well, what stay, on your, stay on your path. Don't question it. Don't second guess yourself. Stay on your path, wherever it takes you, wherever it turns, wherever it, wherever it leads, wherever it introduces you, there's a reason. Yeah. Right? The person you met at a party or the person you sat next to at a park bench, there's a reason. Mm -hmm. what, what is that reason? Well, maybe just have lunch with somebody who's interesting. No. There's a reason you met this person. They're meant to be there. That connection was meant to happen. Right? And the more we're not in ourselves, the more the connection is lost and the irritation appears. And we don't trust. The more we become paranoid, the mm -hmm. more we suffer, the more... So we start to not see beyond ourselves. And that's where you, I think that's where the madness comes in. Well, yeah, because archetypally, I mean, the, the magician holds so much potential of creation, of birth, of change, of amazing ideas. Right? Mm -hmm. So 
when that is not happening, what, what arises? Pain, suffering, paranoia, um, questioning, am I, am I good enough? Am I enough? Yeah. Am I supposed to be this way? Am I deficient somehow? Am I crazy? Yeah. Right? Any because a lot, of, a lot of young magicians, a lot of young magicians, and this is both, this is gender neutral. Yeah. So all the genders who come out as magicians know they're magicians. There's something wrong with them. They're not like everybody else. Mm -hmm. Certainly have, and the more that. that's encouraged, and the more that is um, protected, the better these children, the better these children grow and develop and change, and the less, the more problematic they become, and it's yeah, it is difficult. It is, and it. I think the awareness around the archetypal patterns is so important to yes. notice in your children. Yes. There is, um, I think his name is Greenspan. Is it Alan? One of, he, he is a child psychologist. He writes about playground politics and how kids act on the playground and what they're showing He's basically talking about the archetypal patterns mm -hmm. of how these, how they interact with their families and how they interact with the outside world and how their families try to change them and how that becomes a destructive, essential mistake in their development. I can see that because it is their identity. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the questioning of, of what is God, very, very magician. The warrior doesn't question. It's either I believe or I don't believe. Yes. The magician questions. Yeah. I didn't see you yesterday. Why are you here today? What are you doing? Should I trust you? Right. But we have gods. I mean, we, we, we historically, um, Hecate is, you know, the goddess of magic, but so was several other gods and goddesses in different mythologies. We know her because she spans almost the entire um, area between the Mediterranean and uh, Southwestern Asia, or Western Asia and Southwestern Asia. And she appears everywhere. Mm -hmm. So they say that in Babylon, that in the early days of Babylon, that they, they had magicians for everything. You would go and if you wanted to get married, you would have a magician tell you if the relationship was going to work out. If you want to build a house on a piece of land, a magician would tell you if that's a good idea or not. If you wanted to see if you have like kids in your future, you would go to a magician and would tell you. So there were different tasks. They have different powers. And they were able to live and multiply and and over time, every time there's a change, a political change, the magicians go first. Because somehow they are the most dangerous things threatening the stability of the well, country. Because they're questioning the structure. Yeah, and power. They yeah. always question power. I can see why they go first. Never thought of they that. They always question power. They always question, why do you have it? Why is it yours? Yeah. And why do you think that it should be kept that way? I think those are very valid questions. Yeah. I, it's just, it's, things are going into place in my brain. It makes me think of a, 
a teacher and mentor that's very dear to me that I had quite a few years ago. Ooh. And I kept asking, she's not a magician, she's a warrior first. Yeah. And I kept saying, well, where did this come from? And why do I have to do it this way? And who said that? And where do I find this? And she got so frustrated with me. She said, Chrissy, can't you just do what you're supposed to do? I said, you- no. I said, I have to know <coughs> the why and the how. And I understand that so differently today. And why it was so frustrating for each of us in that relationship. Because yeah, re- for her, yeah. it was this and that. And for me, you've had, was- you've had a lot of encounters with that. You just yeah. haven't, <clears throat> you haven't registered them all. Uh-huh. I had many encounters with that. I would have, I had a, a warrior teaching psychology. So when I asked about an abstract idea, that's not what was said. That's not what they meant. I was like, well, what do you mean? That's not what they meant. There is different understandings of. I can see that's, how. That, let's put it that way. Me and her did not get along. Yeah. I can better understand that. And I would think today, if you were around her, your, your ability to communicate and move within the warrior realm would be different. Yeah. And I know next yeah. week we're going to talk about warriors. Yeah. The vein of my existence. Yes. <laughs> so the warriors among us. Well, I just kid with you. Warriors are essential to yeah. the archetypal patterns. They sustain safety. They hold society together. Um, you couldn't have a magicians running an army. One of the first things when I first met you, Dr. Lahab, you had asked me about my husband, who's a warrior. And, and I had told you a little bit about him. You said, oh, he's a warrior. I can see why you would be with him. Hmm. And I was telling him that after the conversation, because one of the things that you said is he, he's able to protect your back because you don't pay attention to the details. Oh, yeah. You just walk into the dark. And I told him that. And he said, well, yeah. That's what I do. I I said, well, thank you, because I don't care about those details. (laughs) I'm going to walk in there. I expect you to be behind me. Right. It's a good give and take. And I appreciated him so much more after I learned that. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, great conversation today. Yeah, it's always interesting talking about what it is to be the magician archetype. If you're confused about this conversation and you think that everything we said is full of crap, that means you're a magician archetype. I'm going to end with that. Good ending. Thank you for joining us, everyone. Thank you, everyone. And we will be back next week. Take care, everybody.